move um, the motion. Thank uh, you, that Senator in the opinion Miller. of the Senate, the following is a matter of urgency. The need for the Prime Minister to attend the United Nations Climate Summit 2014 and to recognise that Australia's emissions reduction target is inadequate. Thank you, Senator uh, As we stand here in New York today, uh, it's been estimated 400,000 people have been marching for action, not words on addressing the real crisis that is facing humanity, and that is global warming. People from right around the world have marched in the last 24 hours. It has been amazing to see the kind of outpouring uh, from everywhere. Uh, there were 40,000 in London, 30,000 in Melbourne, marches in Delhi, Rio, Paris, Barcelona, Jakarta, uh, right around uh, the world. We've got um, also reports uh, from uh, the Pacific Islands, uh, from all different uh, races, religions, backgrounds, countries, ages. We even had a beekeeper in Bulgaria standing up with his sign, action not words, with his bees. We had small children in Dakar posting saying they wanted action on climate change. All over the world, people are recognising that we are on a trajectory of four degrees of global warming. That is an unlivable planet, an unlivable planet, and that is something we need to consider. We have a Prime Minister who is in Australia today, and he made his statement to the House of Representatives on a national security matter. The overwhelming emergency of the time is the global warming challenge. Of course, we have to take on matters of national security, but national security now needs to be expanded to include the ramifications of the crop failures, of the species losses, of the deaths that are going to come from extreme weather events, from bushfires, from catastrophic heat waves, from spread of diseases and invasive species. We are already seeing the impacts. We're seeing it in Antarctica and in the Arctic. We're seeing the acidification of the oceans. We're seeing sea level rise. In the lead up to Ban Ki moon's summit in New York, there have been endless uh, reports coming out just talking about how serious um, matters really are. And as a result of that, people are taking this on. They are not only installing renewable energy, putting photovoltaics on their roof, engaging in energy efficiency. They are taking to cycleways. They want more public transport. They want to actually get emissions down because it's healthier. And of course, it's the security of the planet that we are talking about and people's lives into the future. And divestment has now become extremely uh, important. And just today, the heirs of the Rockefeller oil fortune announced after the New York march that their 860 million uh, philanthropic fund was now going to divest from fossil fuels. And that follows on from Sydney University a matter of a week or so ago, the Uniting Church in Australia. There is now growing support for getting out of fossil fuels. And not only that, China has now capped the quality and the quantity of the coal that it will import. It is now time for Australia to get with it. The Prime Minister is shaming us by his refusal to attend the Leaders' Summit in New York. He is going to be there the day after for a meeting of the Security Council with regard to Iraq and Syria. He should have gone a day earlier so that he can attend. And the reason he hasn't is that he cannot justify the pathetic 5 per cent emissions reduction target um, by 2020 on 2000 levels. It is disgraceful, and it is even more disgraceful since it is becoming easier by the minute to achieve because, with the slowdown in our economy, the closure of some of our more polluting factories, it's meant the task is much easier. It has gone down from something like 750 um, million tonnes right down to now uh, around 400. So it's easier. We could be going in a much, much more ambitious way than we are. It is disgraceful that he's not going to be in New York at the summit. It is disgraceful that he's sending the Foreign Minister, um, Julie Bishop, to tell the world 
that one of the highest per capita polluting nations on the planet, one of the richest and most able countries to act on this at a time when we've already got something like 9,000 megawatts, uh, too much of coal-fired power. We could shut it down tomorrow. A couple of those power stations could go. It would make a big difference. We could be saying no more coal in the Galilee and Bowen basins, no more CSG. We could be out there actually doing something and saving our forests at the same time. But instead of that, we are prepared to drive the fossil fuel industry to the detriment of the planet, and it's disgraceful. But let's get to what Australia is going to have to face up to. We have been asked to make a much more ambitious uh, contribution to keeping Australia to uh, a contribution that will secure global warming of less than two degrees. Minister Hockey has been out talking about the G20. He failed to point out to Australians that in the, in the G20 mandate they have said they want to keep global warming to less than two degrees, and they believe that a carbon price is the way to do it. We haven't heard anything from Mr Hockey out of the G20 about that. What we need to make sure is that we keep faith with our Pacific Island neighbours as well. They have made the point in the last 24 hours that, quote, we were one of the campaigners for Australia to be on the Security Council. We brought along many of the other bodies to do that on the understanding that the Australia-Pacific Islands relationship is close, not subject to the whims of one or two politicians from time to time. It's based on stability and long-term relations. So this is very disappointing for us that you would come and be friendly when you want to be on the Security Council, but after you do that, you do your own thing. He said betrayal was too strong a word to use for now but it may not be soon. That's exactly how the Pacific Islands feel about Australia betraying the planet in doing what it should do on global warming. Mr Deputy President, by 31 March next year, Australia has to put on the table what our post-2020 emissions reduction target is going to be. The Climate Change Authority came out and said very clearly we need a 40 to 60 per cent reduction in emissions by 2030. That is what the Greens say we should be going for as well. Net carbon zero by 2050. That means a massive shift in our economy, massive opportunities in terms of investment, jobs, a change in investment, in R&D, a whole range of things. But the question for the government is, what is your process for determining what the emission reduction target should be? We legislated under the Clean Energy Package to set up the Climate Change Authority, have them assess the level of the target that is necessary and recommend that to the parliament. The government has no process. What is your process? You cannot seriously stand up in front of the world and say that 5 per cent is enough and try to pretend that a $2.5 billion emission reduction fund is going to cut it. Nobody will believe you. And the Australian community have made it very clear in the marches in the last 24 hours that people want answers. They want action. They do not want any more of the waffle and climate denialism uh, that actually um, demonstrates what the government thinks. And I was interested uh, that Senator Ryan retweeted the march in Adelaide, and I thought perhaps he's had a change of heart. Perhaps he now supports climate action. So I'll be very interested to uh, see, or maybe it was a fake account. Uh, I apologise if it was a fake account. I was, I was momentarily distracted, uh, Senator. I will apologise if that is the case. Uh, but I just want to say that around Australia, Order. people want serious action on global warming. They want Australia to stand up and the very future um, of, of, a, of our generation and generations to follow depend on us doing this in a timely manner. We were running out of time. Before 2020, global emissions have to peak and start to come down or will go beyond tipping points. We cannot risk doing that. And time and tide wait for no man, including our Prime Minister. Global warming is accelerating. It needs action. The government needs to tell us what is going to be our emissions reduction target 
up to 2020 and then post-2020. The world is going to ask for that. The Australian community deserve to hear it first. <laughs>